Hello everyone, this is Showa. Today I will be reacting to the Genshin Impact teaser Only Old Memories Remain. Today I will be reacting to the Chinese version, the Japanese version and the English version. So I'll be reacting to all three versions um, as they all are different in their own way with different people dubbing the audio and also the way that it's uh, translated as well. Uh, there's also the difference in the language in how everything else sounds. Um, Chinese being the more condensed and the quicker of the languages is also being the original would fit more easily with the actual imagery that's been used. Japanese is slightly longer but it follows the same cultural um, similarities uh, so that would be quite interesting to watch and then English which isn't the same um, so I'm expecting something completely different in translations um, so yeah let's get to it This style of animation is very reminiscent of well the way they move is reminiscent of shadow puppetry especially Bowyang's movement shadow puppetry being a, a traditional um, puppet art form in China the way his arms moves is very similar to how the uh, puppets move Uh, he's calling him Shungdi, which basically means brother, or in, the, in some cases it's like It's a term used to address someone as, oh, we're brothers in arms You know, it's something that um, is commonly used in a lot of um, famous Chinese uh, 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 literary works Like in Three Kingdoms, uh, Water Margin, even in um, Journey to the West Journey to the West, instead of Shungdi, it's uh, Xishong, which means um, brother under the same master or teacher. The imagery used so far is very simple, it, but it flows really well with the music. The music kind of building up from really slow, adding a bit more tempo and adding more instruments in. The, the string instruments that have been added in really adds more depth. And this part here, the scene where the actor asks him, Boyan, do you want to go home? And he basically replies saying, um, uh, of course I want to go home. But he's, he's paused there before answering him. He's, he's, it's like, 
it's like a stance, you know, when people say, oh, do you want to go home? And some people just take the stance saying, no, I don't want to go home. We're already here and all that. But here he's starting to show his honest side. He's starting to feel the stress and the, um, the fear of being alone and also dying, unable to return home. And there's that depth in the voice acting as well, which is really good. The terms Shundi Mei means older brother, younger brother, older sister, younger sister. So I have not seen what it says in the English, but I'm pretty sure they probably just say, oh, I must have families or I must have siblings, rather than kind of breaking it down into the four. So the two, the sister and the brother, then breaking it up down to the age as well. I'll be interested to see what the Japanese do as well. Ah, the, the wind instruments are starting to kick in and that's really building up that that feeling in me. Chills. Ooh. You can you can feel every moment of that in its intensity since around here at two minutes and fifty. The part where he's starting to remember and just the screams alone. I mean, for us, we we'll, might never ever meet the actual Yakshas inside the game, you know. But we've met Shao, and that that cry from Shao is, uh it, re it really brings more to the character. And it's just, it's just a teaser as well. It's just it's part of the in-game movie cutscene, and that adds so much more to the character. I love how this memory sequence works as well. So he has obviously forgotten everything. And when he starts to see these shadows, his, his memory comes back in the order that he's lost them in, or in the order that he is uh, from latest to oldest. So here his, his latest memory would be the loss of his brothers and sisters, the suffering that um, Ishao is going through then the part where they're all enjoying themselves having a little brother and sister time standing together to face on the enemy and then finally 
just his name comes back and this part here where we see the shards for each of the actors and then them breaking telling us that they have been you know they're dead including the blood um stains like just kind of just moving in like a, um like if it's a drop of blood and water the only one that's standing is Shao, who's the last shard remaining and he's not dead so his shard's not broken nor is it dyed with blood this cutscene is uh yeah it's just amazing um it really ups the game in a sense in in terms of the storytelling and even the visuals and the music alone uh, are, th are things i've really enjoyed um, so the next one is the japanese version so let's go on to that I've always tried to find what this is. So this is a portable fire starter that shows a lot in Chinese uh, period dramas. It's like um, a bamboo, um, a small piece of bamboo that's been carved into like a, a pen, but no actual like ink or, um, or brush. It's just empty, but inside, you basically have, um, I assume it's incense, something that you can burn and it will stay burning. And basically they just carry this portable fire lighter before lighters even existed. I've always wondered what this is called though in English. Straight away the voices are completely different. I mean, Fuxia sounds completely different in Chinese in tone and in depth compared to the Japanese version. Boyong as well sounds different, but I feel they're quite similar as well in the way that they're, they're acting so far. You see what I mean by the, the music? It starts off really slow, just the piano, and then the piano builds up from single notes to more chords. I wonder if this is actually the seal we broke to get into the chasm. So I'm not talking about the needle, I'm talking about the actual five seals that we had to break for the adventurer that basically covered the mine itself, since I believe that's part of the seal. But I guess it could also be the abyss that we were trying to escape from. I love this edition of the Zifa, uh, the what was Chinese would call a paper, and it's like that that string where it, instead of just strumming it, it's repeatedly just kind of like you kind of it's like a twitching motion in your finger. I don't know what it's called, but it's basically just repeatedly hitting the string at that tone and building up the tempo as well to kind of give it that that rhythm and that that feeling. I 
You see, this is the difference. So in the Chinese one, when he asks this question, do you want to go home? In the Chinese one, the Chinese guy says, war, and then he pauses. Here, instead of having uh, Watashi or Ore, there's no, there's no actual indication of his reply before pausing. He just kind of just goes into it. So here they replace the war with kind of like a grunt, kind of like um, an expression of, I can't even remember how to pronounce, uh, say it, but it's just an expression of grief or, or, or not being able to keep it in himself anymore of the, what the truth is. So here, instead of saying "shongdi jiemei," he says "kazoku," um, which basically translates to "jia." In other words, family. So, like I said, there's that difference in the translation. But technically, family is fine. But family also indicates um, rather than brothers and sisters, it also includes father, mother, um, uncles, like everyone basically of the family line. And then it's Bo Yang who says Kyodai. So which Kyodai basically translates to Shongdi. So he's asking about siblings, but when um, Fushu says um, Kazoku, he means family. So he could be talking about anyone, but Bo Yang picks out that it's brothers and sisters or um, siblings. Then so the Chinese one, he just says Xing Shongdi Jianbi. And that basically means siblings. So there's no question about who he's talking about. I do admit the Japanese voice acting is always really nice to hear. That part where he's like, that, that tone can, can feel that longing for him to remain because he's so scared of being alone in the dark by himself. The screams are just as effective, and that is props to the actors. They they really know how to kind of draw that in. I bet the people playing the Japanese dub are were just relishing in those screams, as in like those screams really caught them and drew them into this story completely, even more. Music. Um, music is still just so strong when it gets near the end. Um, like I said, he, he used the term Kazoku, but technically the Japanese have also taken the Chongdi um, Jiemi into their own um, borrowed language as well. So they could say Kyodai Shimai instead of Kazoku as well. So I'm assuming they, they 
had to use Kazaku to fit it in somehow. Maybe it's just too long, or maybe because it didn't flow right in the Japanese language. It was a very interesting look into seeing how it was translated, and the performance was really great. Uh, so the next one is the English version. I find the fact that there's no subtitles for the Chinese and the Japanese version to be a bit of a disappointment. I, d I don't mean that they need to have the English subs. I mean, they should have actual subtitles for their own languages. Like I said, the Chinese language, just the symbols alone have so much meaning and it would be nice if they just added them in. Because uh, then if anyone could read Chinese, they could understand more, more depth in the actual script that's being used and the same for the Japanese as well. So far, both actors are doing a very good job. I, I could, like, Boyan's voice actor is really keeping the character that's been maintained so far through the two. I think everyone is um, depicting the Yaksha in their own different way. Like, with the tone of voice, the way he's speaking, even like um, conveying the confusion he's having because of his memory loss. It's all different through all three performers so far. Believe me, I want to know as much as you do. Here we are, the two who agreed to stay here together, and I can't even call you by your name. It's a shame. Stay here? No. No, you have to leave. Nonsense, Brother Yaksha. I'm down here for good now. Don't you remember? Too late to have regrets. The seal can't be broken. The seal. Ah, oh, yes. I'm a Yaksha who came here to fight. Brother, brother, are you okay? <laughs> Look at the state of me. I don't think I've got long now. I, I feel. When the term brother is used in English, it feels a bit weird, you know, um, maybe because it's not commonly used in uh, any sort of context, at least not in any dramas I've watched. You, I hear a lot of African-Americans go like calling um, other African-Americans the brothers, sisters, you know, but that term is used in a different kind of context. And I, you don't see that in uh, war films either. They don't call each other brothers. I mean, they, they use the term brothers in arms, but they always call each other by each other's name. So in this case, because Bo Yang doesn't know his name, he only calls him brother. Though, again, the term or the use of the word in English to me sounds very odd. The strings, just the strings. Clearest day. What do you think? Am I losing my mind now too? Hmm. Boy, do you want to go home? I made my decision to leave Zhong Zhao up on the surface. I obviously. Of course, I want to go home. I enjoyed that. That break there, that, that long pause, that sigh, him trying to show a brave front, but then collapse and give in and just be honest. I must have family too. So they've used the term family here as well, which makes sense because it would be a bit long to say older brother, younger brother, sister, younger sister, it's just too long. So it makes sense to use family. See, so here he they use brothers and sisters instead of kyodai, in as in the Japanese sense. Brothers and sisters. Yes, but who am I? Where 
is my family. The way he falls as well is so reminiscent of like like a puppet, you know, like his strings has been cut. That's what I meant by the shadow puppetry. Instead of like doing an animation where you fall beautifully, he's just falling like he's just got nothing supporting him. And that's really immersive. Again, the, the cries of anguish, loss, craziness, it's oh, just beautiful performances. I, I remember when the game first started, I was very not a fan of the English dubs because I, I didn't feel like they were able to convey um, what the other dubs had done so far, especially the Chinese dub. But as, as this game has been going along, it is really showing how Mihoyo and the staff that are involved have upped their game to try and keep everything at the same level, no matter which language version people are using. And it's brilliant. That is good. Uh, like I said before, it's the consistency in all of these versions is amazing. Uh, I feel like I might have done a little injustice to the Japanese version. I just need to go back and check something. Yeah, so I was wrong. He didn't leave it silent when he was asked. He said his line and then brought it to a pause and then a grunt. And then he says the honest opinion of he wanting to go back. So, yeah, that was my fault. This imagery that's used in the beginning, like a matchstick, uh, it's very also quite um, reminiscent of the story of the matchstick girl. You know, the one who in the cold is selling boxes of matches to people walking on the street on Christmas Day. And here uh, she starves um, because she's not able to obviously sell the matches, can't go home. But she's um, striking the matches to keep herself warm during winter and then she starts hallucinating, seeing herself, uh, um, seeing her parents, seeing her grandmother, seeing the food, the clothes and all that stuff that she would have gotten if she was not poor. Um, here we're seeing something similar to how the, um, the domain itself is playing on the memories of the characters.
想回家吗？ Uh, the other thing is, it's 回家 means do you want to return to your family? I think in I have to check again because my memory is not very well good. But I wonder if they use the word home instead of family in the other two dubs. Correction. I think I said that Boshacius or Fushia said that he had Shongdi Jiemei, but it's actually Boyang who says Shongdi Jiemei. He actually says Jiaren, which means family members. So the translation of the Japanese and the English are actually fine, but what comes after with Boyang is different. I love the the panic that Boyang goes into with his Chinese dub. He he straight away panics. He's trying to make sure he's still alive, and then that desperation is heard in his voice, and is conveyed when he says, "Don't die before me," but in Chinese. So him using the term "shongdi jiemei" when everyone's calling him "dagger, dagger," as in his two sisters are referring to him as older brother, defeats the point of saying "jie." Don't know if he's meant to be the older brother because he's just calling him "fusha" instead of "dagger," and then he's also the same. But anyway,、uh, that was a very interesting look into how the languages are translated and also then applied into these cutscenes. Because obviously, as I mentioned before, the length of the languages spoken is different、uh, for each, and therefore crafting is required to convey the meaning as best as possible while keeping it within this four minutes of footage. So. Like I said, they're really upping their game, and it's really good to see.、Uh, if you like this video,、um, like and subscribe,、um, and hopefully I'll be able to、uh, do more of these kind of analysis for languages for Genshin stuff,、um, and any other stuff that I feel like I can share with other people. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.